Hey guys, Dr. Isertel here for Renaissance Periodization, and today I'm going to chat about a little bit of a special topic, something near and dear to my heart, and that's high intensity training, or HIT as it's otherwise abbreviated and known popularly. So, first of all, what is high intensity training? Well, it was invented probably by Arthur Jones sometime in the 70s. Arthur Jones manufactured exercise equipment and he also sold programs with it and high intensity training was his philosophy. Here are the main tenets of high intensity training. and There are basically three that are universally accepted among almost all sort of high intensity training proponents and there are plenty of modern proponents. Number one, and probably the most common, is to train to absolute failure for every single working set. That means absolute concentric failure usually and there are some other modifications. So you can't get any more reps in that set than the set is over every single time you train. Number two is that you train with a low volume. The original high intensity training protocol called for only one set total per body part per week or every couple of days. All right? So if you're training back, that means one set of bent over rows to absolute failure and that's your back workout. So we're talking about very low volumes. Now there are some modifications in modern schemes, but generally their volumes are much lower than typical bodybuilding programs. And lastly, most high intensity training protocols call for very infrequent training. So usually that means one to two times per week, right? And we'll talk about a little bit down the line why even two times a week is not frequent enough if we follow the other two tenets of this program. So this kind of training is popular currently, has been more popular in the past, but it makes a resurgence every now and again. It is popular among bodybuilders, fitness enthusiasts to this day. So we're here to talk about problems with high intensity training. What are the problems with high intensity training? Why are we even making this video? Well, they are the problems with the main tenets. Such as, training to failure is problematic. We're going to examine why that's the case. Training with low volumes chronically is also problematic, and we'll figure out why. And training infrequently, given the first two, is also very problematic. So the problem with HIT is in its basic core philosophy, not necessarily its application. So we're going to take a look at each tenant individually, we're going to look at failure training, we're going to look at low volumes, and we're going to look at frequency application, and we're going to try to figure out exactly why and how high intensity training suffers from a variety of these drawbacks. So, training to failure in one single exercise session is actually a pretty good way to stimulate gains. It's probably the best. Now, it's not overly superior to submaximal training that gets close to failure but not quite, but it does have a slight advantage. And we'll take a look at a little bit of data in a sec. Now, however, training to failure for any unit of stimulus, for any one set of failure training that you do, a vast disproportionate amount of fatigue is also accumulated. So that per some unit of growth, almost as much growth, or just a little bit more growth than you would have gotten almost trained to failure, you get much more fatigue from failure training. Such that, if you train to failure in repeated sessions, as high intensity training states you should, you're going to get much more fatigue for the gains that you're getting than with submaximal training. Fatigue simply gets out of hand, and it turns out the fatigue gets so high, you will overreach or overtrain much sooner than otherwise, and you can't train sustainably like this if you're training to failure all the time. So failure training isn't worth the trade-off because it is good maybe every now and again to get a lot of adaptations, but if you train constantly, the fatigue gets really out of hand because it's much more fatiguing than it is beneficial. Here is a basic sort of visual representation of that taking a lot of the studies on this subject together. So with failure training, we get, as you can see, just a little bit more growth, and it's meaningful, than with submaximal training, maybe staying two reps shy of failure or something like that. But the fatigue is at times probably double what you would get if you just stopped two reps short of failure. And that's two measly reps. 
Maybe you could do another set of two reps right after and get probably close to the same amount of growth, but still just about half the fatigue. So per unit of input, failure training just causes lots of fatigue, plain and simple. So failure training is not sustainable. Next, we look at the problems with low volumes in general. And here's where all of this started. In the early literature on low volume training, a lot of the studies were very short, okay? They were typically in several weeks of length, and they were used on beginners. There's a problem with that we'll get to in just a second. And these studies illustrated that statistically, the gains were almost identical from one set, sometimes to failure, sometimes not, as it were, as the gains were, from two to three sets. So initially, this led researchers to conclude, oh, in the early 80s, that perhaps one set to failure is just as good as multiple sets. Why do extra work when you don't need to? And I agree with the general idea behind that. Why would you do extra work if you can get the same amount doing less work? That sounds really awesome. And high-intensity training proponents continue to cite these studies. There's a problem with that. The reality is that beginners have such a massive response to training they're so primed to grow because they've had no experience in training, they will grow from anything. And the physiological systems in the muscle particularly that actually cause growth are completely topped out with just about one set. If you do any extra, you're already hitting maximum growth with just one set, so extra would be a waste of time. Now, as time progresses, and as these beginners turn into intermediate strength trainers, as they train more, more volume seems to be a better approach. They can now tolerate more volume and benefit from it because it's not good enough anymore just to do one set. Two, three, four, etc. sets seem to be better. And we'll illustrate that graphically in a bit and illustrate this as well in that modern training theory states that more training is always better so long as you can recover. So if you can recover from more training, you will grow from more training. If you go too far, you won't, and we'll see that visually in just a second. So I've got a couple of sort of charts for you guys to look at, find them a little bit informative, hopefully. So here's our first visual representation, and this is addressing the beginning studies. This is probably about the first four weeks or so of actual training for beginners. And what these studies, this is kind of a summary of all, uh, or was most of those studies. And what those studies found was that for three sets of training over here on your left-hand side, the three sets of training grew just a little bit more muscle, if you see that dotted line up there, than one set. But in a typical study of subject size, maybe 10 people, that's usually not statistically significant to become an actual difference that you can report in a journal. So the people writing the articles have to report, well, you know, that's just about the same as far as our stats can detect. And they're 100% right in saying that. So if you are in the first four weeks of training, you bet you can do one set of all of your exercises a couple times a week and you will get maximal results. Absolutely in the first four weeks. Now, things get a little bit more complicated as you gain experience. In studies that last between 8 and 12 weeks, we start to see for three sets that muscle growth really does begin to meaningfully and statistically significantly outpace our one set training group. So now, if you're training for 8 to 12 weeks, you're going to start to need a little bit more volume. You're going to benefit from more volume of training. So already, who are we talking about? Who are we making this video for? We're making it for you guys out there that have been training a couple of months to a couple of years or maybe even longer. Most people don't watch these kinds of videos just starting out with training. They just hire a trainer or they go to the gym and start doing stuff. So how many people are we really concerned with if, if high intensity training is being advocated for your average trainer that's been training a while, already it's suffering from a problem that it doesn't present enough volume because multiple sets are better than single sets even after you've only trained for 8 to 12 weeks. Now, very interesting set of studies, and this has been summarized much better than I can do it for you in some very good literature reviews. Experienced trainers, this entire chart is for experienced weight trainers, all these studies have been done on. What they'll do is they'll take people who have been training for a while, give them a program that either has one set, 
per training session or per body part or per every couple of days. Or they'll take two to three sets, they'll have a group train with four to five sets, and they've had groups go six sets and more. And here's what tends to happen. Groups that train with one set, they grow muscle, but not that much. Groups with two to three sets of training, four to five sets, more and more volume, basically, benefit more and more and more from training. It turns out it's very difficult to get a training program together in the laboratory that actually leads to less growth. It's difficult to get too far. So it turns out that within very so traditional training parameters, typical exercise splits, you, the more you do, seemingly the better. Now here's an interesting thing to notice. Yes, there is a clear pattern of diminishing returns. That is, if you say you want to add one set to your program, you'll get a huge benefit adding a set if you're starting at one set. If you're starting at five sets, adding a set may not make the biggest difference in the world. But taking that into account, more volume seems to be better. Here's the most advanced chart I have to show you guys today, or one of them. This is uh, an illustration of recovery ability versus training volume. Remember we said that more training is always better so long as you can recover. Well, here's the deal. All the way to the right, first of all, the colors, right? It, it, green is muscle growth. In blue, we have sort of potential for muscle growth that we're not tapping out because we're not hitting our recovery. What's our recovery? Well, in this, it's the dotted line. The dotted line in this chart, all the way at the top there, represents our maximal ability to recover. If we train for one or just two sets over there on the right, we get some growth, but we're leaving a lot in the tank. We're not getting to our maximal ability to recover. We're leaving a lot of stuff out. We could be doing better. Now, if we get over to growing a little bit more by doing more training, yeah, we're doing better, so I term that decent training, but we're still not getting everything we can out of our program. The optimal training program, difficult to hit all the time, but you can sort of wiggle around that area, is when you have as much stimulus as you can recover from. You're doing as many sets as you can recover from, you're topping out, you're maxing out all of your growth potential. Now, of course, this can backfire if you take it too far. Remember we said so long as you could recover. Well, in this one, we went overboard on the stimulus. We got a good amount of growth, but because we went over our ability to recover, it cost us muscle growth, thus that little red rectangle on the top. So it's important not to train too much, but let's put it this way. High intensity training is so far away from training too much, we shouldn't be concerned about it. High intensity training is all the way over there on the right, and it leaves a lot to be desired because we're not training with enough volume to really uh, get the max potential we can. So for our last tenet of high intensity training, we have the idea of infrequent training. Oftentimes, high intensity training advocates will say you actually need to decrease your training frequency as time goes on to allow for more recovery. Well, let's figure out what that's going to look like. So, Training frequency, there is no optimal seeming training frequency. What really matters is you should get a high workload in for the whole week or for a whole time frame. But how do you determine how much frequency you do in each workout? Well, how hard you train in each session, how much volume determines the frequency. If each one of your sessions has a ton of volume in it, you'll need more time to recover and thus your frequency will be lower. You can get the same weekly total volume by training just a little bit in each session Tiny bits of volume added up over high frequencies still result in a similar amount of muscle growth. So if you can recover quickly, and if you can train very hard, you can do higher frequency and higher volume at the same time. If you train with one set to failure, let's say two times per week, that's just not enough volume in any session to need a lot of time to recover and thus the frequency is inappropriate for the volume. It's not enough volume for the frequency. And we'll have a visual representation in just a second to really clarify what that means. So, you know, if you do 10 sets of 10, yeah, you might be able to train only once a week or once every half a week or something like that, but with one set of 10, do you really disrupt homeostasis enough to, to require that much recovery time? Do you really grow that much in the couple of days between training to justify training so infrequently? And the answer is probably not. 
So we have a big green OK sign at the bottom that signals to us this is a fine method of training. And on top here, we have essentially a graph for growth slash homeostatic disruptions. So you stimulate a muscle on Monday, it goes through its growth cycle, it recovers by Wednesday, and then you stimulate it again. It recovers by Friday, you stimulate it again, next Monday it's recovered, you hit it again. So we're always either actually training or growing. Perfect, we use the entire week to grow. That's exactly what a bodybuilding split should look like. Now, if you like to hit it much harder per any given session, Monday, you hit it hard and you get a big homeostatic disruption. It takes a really big toll on the body. It takes a long time to recover. You grow muscle for that entire time. By Thursday, only Thursday, not Wednesday, you're ready to train again. You hit it on Thursday. You hit it again really hard, big homeostatic disruption up there. And then by next Monday, you're okay to train. And that's totally fine. Here's what high intensity ends up being like if you've trained for longer than probably a couple of months. Looks like that. So on Monday, you do one measly set to failure. Basically, you recover probably within a couple of hours, a day at most. And then you spend the rest of the time not adapting and not training and basically just standing in place. Then Thursday, you hit it again, barely a workout, one set. That's it. And essentially, you spend a lot of time not doing a whole lot. You spend a lot of time missing out on growth that you could have done. So to close out this discussion, we got some sort of real world tips and implications. The main points, sort of the take home messages of this discussion, is that failure training is not a sustainable way to train. It's okay occasionally, but it's definitely not okay to train to failure from a perspective of doing the best and growing the most muscle if you're training every session to failure. High volume training, and the literature on this is crystal, crystal clear, causes more growth than low volume training. Now, one set is high volume for people just starting out, but if you haven't just started out, you've been training for a couple of months, and especially a couple of years, multiple sets, multiple times a week, multiple different exercises from different angles is how you grow muscle. And the frequency, and this is really a big point, needs to be justified by your per workout volume. If you've got big workouts with tons of volume, you can train infrequently. If you have mini workouts, you can train all the time. The Bulgarians do that, Olympic weightlifters do that occasionally. They'll squat every day, every other day, but it's just a couple of sets. That's okay. But if your idea of training is just a couple of sets once a week, that's very much under training, period. You're just not getting as much out of your program as you can. So high intensity training, in conclusion, is an okay to way to train, but it's simply not optimal for muscle growth. So if you're looking to be more muscular than you currently are, if you're especially if you compete in bodybuilding, you have to show off on stage eventually, high intensity training is probably not the right thing to try. What is the right thing to try? Well, I figure I wouldn't just uh, talk smack this entire time and give you guys some actual recommendations for what is a good idea. Good training looks like this. Multiple sets, multiple sessions per week, and every four or five weeks or so before you deload, you can bring it into the gym, hit it hard, and go to actual muscular failure. Outside of that, you got to stay shy of failure, maybe two to three to four reps away from failure, and that way you can train for long periods of time without accumulating much fatigue. You can do high volume, lots of sets, lots of times per week. You can get lots of muscle growth and be on your way to doing the right thing, the best thing for growing muscle, which unfortunately is not high intensity training. Thank you very much, and we'll see you guys next time for another one of these videos.